Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about the brachial plexus. So the brachial plexus is a plexus of nerves formed by the ventral rami of C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. It has four components. that can be remembered by a simple mnemonic. Real teacher drinks cold beer. So we have roots, cord, tr roots, trunks, divisions, cords and branches. In certain cases, C4 gives a major contribution to the brachial plexus and in that case it is said to be prefixed. Whereas if a major contribution comes from T2, then it is said to be postfixed. The roots and trunks lo lo located in the neck, whereas the divisions are located behind the clavicle, whereas the cords are located in the axilla. So I said it consists of roots, trunks, divisions, cords and branches. The roots come from the ventral rami of C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. The ventral rami of C5 and C6 join to form the upper trunk. C7 continues as the middle trunk, whereas C8 and T1 join to form the lower trunk. Each of these trunks gives anterior and posterior divisions. Anterior, posterior. The anterior divisions of upper trunk and middle trunk join to form the lateral cord, whereas the posterior division of all the three trunks will join to form the posterior cord. whereas the anterior division of the lower trunk continues as the medial cord. Each of these cords give various branches for which we have simple simple mnemonics. So, the lateral cord gives LML that is lateral pectoral nerve, muscular cutaneous nerve and lateral root of median nerve. The posterior cord gives ultra which is the upper subscapular nerve, lower subscapular nerve, thoracodorsal, radial nerve and axillary nerve whereas the medial cord gives M for U. So there are four M's. Medial pectoral nerve, medial root of median nerve, medial cutaneous nerve of arm, medial cutaneous nerve of forearm and the ulnar nerve. In addition to this, there are certain branches coming from the roots. That is the long thoracic nerve which comes from C5, C6 and C7. This is the long thoracic nerve. From the upper trunk, we get two nerves, that is the nerve to subclavius and the suprascapular nerve. From C5, we also get the dorsal scapular nerve. Is that clear? So, quick revision, roots, trunks, divisions and cords, finally giving terminal branches. C5 and C6 roots join to form the superior trunk, C7 continues as middle trunk, C8 and T1 form the inferior trunk. The superior trunk uh, gives nerve to subclavius and suprascapular nerve, whereas C5, C6 and C7 gives the long thoracic nerve. 
C5 gives the dorsal scapular nerve. So these are four terminal branches which are unrelated to the terminal branches of the brachial plexus. Each trunk divides into anterior and posterior divisions. The anterior division of upper trunk and middle trunk join to form the lateral cord. The posterior divisions of the various trunks form the posterior cord and the anterior division of the inferior trunk continues to form the medial cord giving various terminal branches that is lateral pectoral nerve, muscular cutaneous nerve and lateral root of median nerve, upper subscapular nerve, lower subscapular nerve, thoracodorsal, radial nerve and axillary nerve and here we have medial pectoral nerve, medial root of median nerve, medial cutaneous nerve of arm, medial cutaneous nerve of forearm and the ulnar nerve. So coming to clinical correlation, herbs paralysis. So this point here where there is the meeting point of the C5, C6 roots and the origin of the anterior and posterior divisions of the upper trunk which also gives the nerve to subclavius and suprascapular nerve. This is called as the herbs point. This is the point where six nerves are meeting. So if there is an injury here, that can cause herbs paralysis. It occurs usually in children during delivery or it can also occur when there is excessive increase in the angle between the head and the shoulder. For example, fall from the back of the horse and landing on the shoulder. So here, there is a Typical deformity called as policeman's tip or porter's tip. It occurs because of paralysis of the deltoid muscle resulting in adduction of arm. Medial rotation of the arm because of involvement of the rotator cuff muscles, supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor. Biceps brachii paralysis causes extension of elbow and pronation of arm. There may be sensory loss along the outer aspect of the arm but there are no autonomic signs. Klumpke's paralysis on the other hand occurs in case of hyperabduction of the arm. For example, when one falls on the outstretched hand or during delivery when there is extended arm in a breech presentation. So here there is involvement of C8 and T1 and all the intrinsic muscles of the hand are involved resulting in claw hand. So there is basically ulnar nerve paralysis. There is sensory loss along the medial border of forearm and hand and there will be Horner syndrome which is characterized by ptosis, meiosis, anhydrosis and anophthalmos. So that finishes brachial plexus and its associated clinical correlation. Thanks for watching and if you like the video then please like and subscribe.